know how to uh, fight back through something like a loser's bracket um, with really cool teams as well. Leonard moving from a slightly different team that he bought in the region finals, but going for this Registeel, the Clefairy, the Regielecki, Spectrier, the, the Landorus, obviously the staple, and picking up actually on the Gigantamax Blastoise. You know, it doesn't have to Gigantamax, but it definitely uh, is a good option when you can get away with it. Uh, Renzo's team looking a little different. Obviously a number of very common and, and well-used Pokemon on there, um, but kind of everything working very well together. The Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Landorus all play really nicely off each other. The Double Intimidate could be an option to try and slow down something like Leonard's Landorus as well. Rounding out with Galarian Moltres, Amoongus and Reggie Alecki. The Amoongus not as popular as in previous years but when it comes to the field and you don't have a good answer to it, it can cause a whole lot of problems. Yeah, we just got to see it yesterday how impactful that Amoongus really could be with the spore pressure. You either have to take that Amoongus out or you risk things going to bed. And Renzo's team, I mean, there's a lot of synergy, a lot of things that work out really well, especially for a comeback potential as we, we got to see it yesterday. So I'm excited to see how Leonard's going to be navigating this. Uh it's going to be a fantastic match, and I think that's probably enough from us. We should just get into the game and start having a look at how these two line up. A reminder, this is going to be a loser's match, so the loser is out of the tournament and will be ending their run right here. Of course, and looking to start applying all that pressure, that Amoongus that we were talking about, paired next to the Reggie Alecki on Renzo's side. And reminder, we are going to be watching from Leonard's view here and he's opting to start with that Reggie Lecky and the Spectre so a very aggressive start on his end. Both trainers trying to carve out an advantage with the Reggie Alecki, I imagine. But the Amoongus, uh, you know, not feeling so safe, already leaving the field and Renzo just trying to pivot into something a little more favorable, which this Landorus definitely could be. For sure. This this resists the Reggie Alecki's hit, which will definitely be nice, but Renzo's Reggie Alecki getting the opportunity to be moving first, getting that Electroweb off. Critical hit on the Spectre, get a little bit more chip, but more importantly, these speed drops. The speed drops are so impactful, and controlling the speed has been something so prevalent throughout Players' Cup 4 with Max Airstreams, being able to obviously use Electroweb as well. So, um, you know. In previous years, people have looked for other options, but now it's just dropping those stages, making sure you're always one or two steps ahead uh, when you're kind of trying to navigate through these battles. We are, of course, going to get to see all of Leonard's four that he's selected, um, but now has to be careful. I mean, that Landorus has come in, may want to try and throw down a, a retaliatory Intimidate against the Landorus that Renzo switched in the beginning of the turn with the Amoonga switch, but definitely thinking this one through. Uh, knows that the next couple of turns are going to be vital and you can't let Renzo just run away with the game with something like his Landorus. But the Regieleki gets out safe and that's really, really important. Of course, so two options, being able to go in the first Landorus or into the Clefairy, taking every last moment to decide here and like timing out. So it is going to be that Landorus joining the field here. It does get the Intimidate off onto Renzo's Landorus. So being able to get that attack drop, definitely nice there. Uh, definitely helping out when it comes to dealing with this. And the will wisp from Spectre kind of going after the wrong target. Maybe expecting the Landorus to switch in for the Regieleki. Uh, will get the burn, will of course get a little bit of damage between turns, but not worrying about that attack stat. So both trainers got the Landorus in perfectly safely. Of course, the Intimidate from Leonard's side sticking on Renzo's side, uh, which could be very, very impactful when it comes to the amount of damage that can be done. Uh, the Spectre, you know, not quite getting everything it wanted in that turn and probably trying to stick around uh, you know think about where it can safely get a will-o-wisp down onto Renzo's Landorus but um, you know a lot of switching already in this game both trainers just trying to make sure they've got the perfect board position to take this game and find an early advantage. Now Renzo showing that he did bring the double intimidate core this time around Landorus switching out as Incineroar joins the field, and the Spectre, not wanting to risk anything this turn, is opting to swap out as well into the Clefairy, a little more offensive option, and takes that Volt Switch pretty well, and Renzo <laughs> gets the opportunity to be pivoting again. So, as you said, a lot of pivoting here, and bringing up that Incineroar to get the Intimidate drop on Leonard was just really nice, and the opportunity to bring that Amoongus out. That's why these moves, the U-turn, the Volt Switch, are always going to be very popular because they allow you to pivot things around. 
they allow you to get the board into the position you really, really want. Uh, but a really nice sword stance there at the end of the turn from Leonard. One of the best ways to try and get around uh, all of these Intimidate drops that Renzo has access to with both an Incineroar and a Landorus on his team. So you've got to make sure your attack's nice and high, uh, not getting reduced before you try and Dynamax. Uh, that can always be a massive problem uh, to, to try and, uh, you know, deal that damage when you're just always getting your attack lowered. Your, your max moves become weaker, and this is something that I think Leonard is being very cautious of, making sure his Landorus is in the perfect position, just switching it out and keeping it safe here. Yeah, last thing you want to be doing is Dynamaxing your Pokemon with a bunch of drops. But Renzo, taking a little more on the offensive, attacking into that Clefairy with a Flare Blitz, bringing it right down, not quite enough, but the swap that Leonard made into that Spectre, definitely useful. Nothing happening from Sport, and Sing, not known for being the most accurate, is going to hit on that Amoongus, giving it a little taste of its own medicine. The the accurate Spore into the safety goggle is <laughs> not going to do anything, and the inaccurate Sing uh, <laughs> landing, and then, like you say, putting Amoongus to sleep, something that it's not used to happening to it. I mean, uh, usually is the one doing the, the application of the, the sleep, uh, effect so definitely gonna mix it up but Amoongus uh, just kind of struggling I think to, to really get a foothold in this game and, and cause too many problems a lovely switch in though from Leonard taking advantage of that safety goggles and he's gonna take another advantage of another switch in here going to be switching the Clefairy out bringing the Landers back in for yet another Intimidate and there's just going to be this taunt coming out from Spectre. So super nice and making sure there can't be any party shots, which is what Renzo went for. So this Incineroar is stuck on the field and either has to just attack or hard swap out. Gonna have to start going after something like the Flare Blitz if it wants to be impactful. Of course, the parting shot, another one of those pivoting moves that was mentioned earlier, you know, just being so good and landing more attack drops as well. So really uh, vital to take that away, I think, from the Incineroar. Uh, but both trainers jockeying to get the best board position. There's been no knockouts so far and no use of the Dynamax either. So both trainers a little bit uncomfortable uh, trying to carve out that huge advantage. It's like a delicate dance between these two right now. And speaking of dancing, Landris going for that Swords Dance. I mean, we talked about earlier getting those attack boosts and it's just taking that opportunity while it can. Renzo, no Incineroar switch, just looking to start putting some pressure down on the Spectre that's been causing it so much issues, but is unable to pick up that KO. No KO, but great damage. And that means the Spectre could be liable to get knocked out um, by just a little bit of damage. You don't have to spend too much time focusing it down. But as you said, it's been a dance across the board, a very gentle waltz, both trainers switching trainers, uh, Pokemon in and out, just trying to find that perfect position and another switch at the beginning of this turn. Cineroar switching out, keeping that Intimidate in the back. I mean, Intimidate Cycling is He's so big and Amoongus coming back out, but Leonard's gonna be applying this pressure first. I mean, he's got that sword stance. It's the opportunity to be start putting that pressure on with this Dynamax. The Landers has finally decided it's time to Dynamax, wants to make sure it's in the best position, clearly feeling a little more comfortable about being able to Dynamax and use that impactfully after that previous Swords Dance as well. Uh, but there's that little bit of damage that the Spectre needed uh, to get knocked out. The Regieleki picks it up and the Regieleki gets to get away from something like this Landorus. And, I mean, we've seen Renzo's Pokemon, one of these Intimidators will be coming back out. So that Sword Stance earlier was definitely huge because it's now not at a negative as Incineroar rejoins the field here. And Renzo, this is just a revolving door of pivoting Pokemon here, but at least there's going to be a big attack into this Amoongus and trying to slowly start whittling down the Pokemon count, Renzo's end. Not quite, but bringing that Amoongus real close. And that Amoongus dangerously low, but clinging on with the Focus Sash, of course, a really nice bit of team building, I think, there from Renzo to understand that sometimes Amoongus is just going to have to take the hit, and you never know what it's going to be coming from, so the Focus Sash helps out across the board uh, when it comes to making sure that your Amoongus can take two hits. Uh, Leonard, you know, losing that Spectria there, kind of the, the less important uh, thing on his team, I think. It wasn't really having much of an impact, maybe throwing down some taunts, but wasn't getting the big damage down, and now is the time where Leonard, now as Landorus is Dynamax, needs to start carving out an advantage and, and taking knockouts. He's down a Pokemon already, but there are a number on Renzo's that should be easy enough to, to pick up, like this Amoongus, for example. 
Yeah, when both players have been playing a little more passively up until this Dynamax, it means that this Dynamax has to be impactful in some sort of way and cannot be wasted. But Incineroar just might be switching out. The Regieleki comes back in. I mean, this Moogus only had the one HP, so very easy cleanup from Leonard's. Reggio Lucky here, and then there's going to be this max airstream to clean up another KO and bringing Renzo down to his last two. And Renzo being put down to his last two, but it does mean he gets to land a double intimidate on the kind of entry to this turn onto this lander, so may find that a little bit more manageable. The one thing that Renzo's not got an answer right now to is the speed boosts. Those speed boosts consistently coming through on the max airstreams. You know, these have been a problem for a, a number of trainers when a lander just gets running and, and takes the game completely away. Just being able to, you know, pick up those speed boosts, move first, do huge damage. Um, you know, it's it's been a big old problem. So uh, Renzo really relying on, on potentially this Intimidate switch him from both of his Pokemon to maybe force Leonard to switch around this Landorus. We know about the Clefairy in the back. The Clefairy is dangerously low, um, and maybe Renzo's kind of hoping that this Landorus stays in. Probably gonna have to Dynamax his own Landorus. Don't forget, Renzo's not used his Dynamax yet, and may just be able to start trying to find an advantage there because the Landorus doesn't care about the Regieleki. The Landorus probably not too worried about the weakened Clefairy as well. So it really is gonna be how much can Renzo get out of his his own Landorus? And no switch on Landorus end though, so opting to use the last turn of Dynamax here as Renzo is going to go for his own Dynamax. I mean, I feel like this is a really safe Dynamax at this point. You need to be Dynamaxing, but as well, this... I think it's negative one at this point. There's been so many Intimidates, so many views, it's hard to keep track. But this Landorus on Leonard's side, not finding the most pressure. This Regieleki can't touch it, and Clefairy... I mean, the biggest fear is drawing it away from other things. So, Reggie Lucky going to start it off, and Landorus is going to finish it off. Double targeting into Renzo's Incineroar here to bring it to a 1v3. But, with all three turns of this max, it's going to be where this Landorus can be picking up the KOs and dealing this damage. Uh, the Landorus on uh, Renzo's side being asked to do a huge amount of work. But with no Intimidates in place on it, just look how much that max airstream does. And actually looking at the board, yes, it looks pretty bleak for Renzo that it's 1v3. But look at the Pokemon Leonard has available. It's really not a 1v3. It's kind of a 1v1 and it's just the Landorus that he has to deal with. The Landorus who's just... Uh, lost access to its Dynamax as well. That's the last of its turns. Yes, it landed the airstreams. Yes, it will be moving first. But what can he do? That he doesn't have access to protect on it. You know, he's going to struggle to to be able to to try and hold off Renzo's Landorus. The Regieleki can't touch it. The Regieleki isn't a factor at this point. So as long as this Landorus gets knocked out from Renzo's side, if he can take it out, um, then he's going to be in a good position. This targeting is important. If Renzo's called this fly, this is a huge turn. And he does call the fly. So Leonard, knowing that the Landers is the win condition to here, keeps it safe with the fly, but Rendo targeting down that Clefairy instead. So fantastic targeting. And it's going down to a 2v1. And I mean, this Landorus on Leonard's side has to hit the field. And when it does, I think there's going to be a nasty surprise for it. It's a 1v1. I mean, it, this Regieleki cannot touch the Landorus, does not have anything but electric type attack. So as soon as this Landorus drops down from Leonard's side with the fly, it's not going to get a knockout on a Dynamax Landorus. Should just get picked up by the Landorus on Renzo's side. Yes, it got away from that turn, but Renzo beautifully targeting the other slot, knowing it had the speed boost, knowing it was going to be able to get away. Then it's just, a, a, you know, another turn to, to tidy up the Regieleki. Nothing that can be done about it. I mean, Leonard hovering in the menu, but he knows. There's, there's nothing that you can do. Um, and Leonard seeing the writing on the wall in this one, uh, hovering that menu and just saying, no, you're going to knock out my Landorus, and then you're going to just take my Regieleki in the next turn. So throwing the towel in, and even down at a significant Pokemon disadvantage, Renzo pulls it back late with just one Pokemon again. It was one Pokemon, but it was the right Pokemon, and all he had to do was take out that Landorus. And we've seen before just how strong Regieleki can be, but... Not being able to hit a ground type at all with only the electric moves is just, I mean, that's just not a situation to be in. And Clefairy with that sing, that sing was definitely fun and being able to hit the Amoongus was nice, but there's absolutely no attacking moves on it either. So it just came down to a point where two Pokemon could do nothing. It was just the Landorus and 
At that point, Leonard's Landers was out of max, so really well played by Renzo, and keeping that Dynamax till last moment was just really well played. Now, there was a whole lot of moving around the board position, making sure that you're in a perfect position. And Renzo played it so well, making sure that his Landorus came in full health, no burns, no intimidate drops, then he Dynamaxed it. Let's head into game two and see if a similar game plan comes out from both of these trainers. There was a whole lot of switching and I can imagine we're gonna get something similar in game two, but the leads uh, could be rather important when it comes to how much pivoting you can do. Hey, speaking of switching it up, there is definitely going to be a big change here, Adam. That Blastoise we've been itching to see finally out on the field. The Blastoise coming out is a nice mix-up from Leonard. I think being able to look at it and say, well, I kind of lacked damage a little bit, so I need something more damaging. Yes, that's important, but rightfully so. And respecting the potential of the Blastoise, even at Team Preview, Renzo bringing that Regieleki, it's going to be an absolute nightmare for that Blastoise to find uh, enough wiggle room to, to try and really you know, land the, the Max Cannonade potentially. Uh, so a lot of work to do on Leonard's side to, to get this Blastoise probably out and then back in at a much better position. Yes, it has the Wakan Berry. Yes, that is very, very helpful, but Regieleki just can keep on working through it and there the Blastoise just has to leave. And leave it does. Lander is coming back in in its place here. I mean, basically intimidate onto Renzo's Incineroar here, but more importantly, not taking a big attack from that Regia Leki. Just going to go for that Electro Web though. That speed control is oh so important and being able to drop Spectre, definitely, definitely nice going forward. It does get the opportunity to go for the taunt onto the Incineroar. We saw it just last time, no parting taunts, definitely being fantastic, but Incineroar not falling for it at all gonna follow up with a flare blitz and just looking to take this horse out of here but it's gonna hold on with a nice healthy amount of HP. Incineroar definitely learned its lesson from last time getting stuck on that parting shot respecting that and just saying no it's actually okay um, I'll just flare blitz you and do a huge amount of damage instead uh, definitely a preferred option. Leonard looking to get this Landorus set up and get it going potentially a little bit earlier than it did last time of course. Renzo is kind of in the other position now, the Regilecki can't do anything to it and has to respect the potential of the Landorus. But if Landorus is going to be setting up, that could be a turn where you just get out of there, maybe even Volt Switch off on that Spectria and then, you know, bounce out um, and get away from the Landorus while it's setting up. So if Renzo calls this, he could put himself in a really good early advantage. Uh, Spectria not going to stay on the field though to allow this to happen. And yep, it's, it's time to show that we've both bought the Regilecki, I guess. <laughs> as well, Renz was showing, hey, as well as this Regieleki, I raise you one, I have my own Landorus as well. So, I mean, that double Intimidate core worked so well in the first match. Not surprised to see it coming out again. And another pivot coming out, getting that chip damage with that Volt Switch into Leonard's Regieleki and getting the opportunity to, yet again, pivot into something else. And it could just be another Intimidate. Don't forget the Incineroar was in the back. Amoongus, though, coming to the fore, maybe going to try and draw some attacks away for a little bit um, as Leonard's does set up. So negating that one Intimidate drop from Renzo's Landorus. But, you know, it's not going to be the, the most powerful Swords Dance uh, that we've always seen. Of course, the opportunity for that Incineroar to come back out on Renzo's end to just drop it back down to neutral. At least it would be then to neutral and not at a negative one, negative two. And showing just how important it is to take that turn to set up, especially in face of a team that's going to be a little more passive in all of these switches. Trainers have been really uh, focused on making sure that your Landorus is always a positive or at least neutral attack. And it's something you have to do because now that Sword Stance from the previous turn is already gone. Right back to neutral. Just going to be this, uh, you know, switch in for Incineroar. Just saying, no, I, I have two Intimidators. I'm going to Intimidate you twice. Renzo, though, going to apply the pressure earlier this time around. Holding off that Dynamax until the last two in the last match. But this time, we're going to see a Max Landorus much earlier on. Oh, definitely. The Landorus is in the same position he got it into in the previous game. I wasn't intimidated, just deciding, you know, I'm going to start going for it and, and start getting those knockouts. The Incineroar switching, trying to help. Leonard, of course, given the opportunity to, to pivot around. And maybe Leonard, you know, having to respect the potential of the uh, Intimidate coming back in, not going for the Dynamax here. Uh, doesn't want to just completely give that away, but that does mean he's not going to have access to Max Airstream, and that means he can start to fall behind a little bit in this game. 
And of course, right on cue, that max airstream coming out from Renzo. Ooh. That's gonna be a huge KO here onto Leonard's Landorus. So this was a tail of two Landorus, but now Renzo in the driver's seat as that one airstream is all it took to get it out of there. And one of the main threats to it in terms of the Intimidate is now gone. Yeah, I mean, the, it's completely taken out by that max airstream. No max from the Landorus on Leonard's side. I wasn't sure if that was the, the right play. Obviously, you want to maybe try and save the max to use for the Gigantamax Blastoise, something he's hovering now. But losing your Landorus, you know, that quickly, two turns that, you know, it, it was setting up one and then it gets knocked out in the second. Uh, just really well positioned by Renzo, kind of forcing Leonard to think before maxing, but didn't even uh, weave that in. And this could be a big old problem. I mean, the, the Blastoise, yes, is going to be the choice for the max. The G-Max Cannonade is going to be very impactful, or the, the, even the, the Max Hailstorm, obviously, to, to try and deal with the Landorus. Either of them are going to do huge damage, but the Landorus on Leonard's side could just keep boosting up its speed and, and keep causing problems. So, um, interesting targeting from Leonard. Be curious to see if this one uh, really pays off. Maybe trying to call a switch into something like Amoongus, um, you know, and, and get that residual damage to make sure that Focus Sash isn't a factor. Um, but this Blastoise has got a whole lot of work to do. I just gotta know though, how excited are you for this Max Blastoise? It, we've been asking for it and we finally get to see it. It's been something I've wanted to see all tournament. I know a few players kind of tapping into it uh, and really trying to make the most of it. Um, but I like this play a lot from the Landorus on Renzo's side. The Max Quake getting that special defense boost, which could be really, really important over the next few turns. You know, it's already got a speed boost. It's already going to be the fastest thing on the field. And just making sure that Spectre isn't able to land a Will-O-Wisp, taking advantage of your speed boost, really, really important. The, uh, the speed boost helping out the Incineroar too means that, hey, it's going to get to parting shot before the Blastoise has even moved. So this Blastoise has kind of got its work cut out for it here, um, you know, being asked to do absolutely everything. And once again, the Regieleki is Leonard's fourth Pokemon. So, you know, it's all on the Blastoise to deal with this, uh, this Landorus. And there's a really good call from Leonard, the Max Hailstorm into the Amoongus. But that parting shot, really really helping out oh for sure so yeah this one's done too much to the incinerator but being able to predict that it was going to go for that parting shot it wanted to drop the special attack on this blast waste that Amoongus was coming in definitely nice in terms of chipping it down but definitely not the type of damage that you want to be getting onto it because that Amoongus I mean it offers its own pressure with score but even just being able to draw things away from the landers is so huge now, the follow me here could just be uh, a really big problem. I mean, yes, it's going to get caught by a couple of attacks, but, you know, that's a lot of damage you're asking the Regieleki to do to an Amoongus, you know, when you're trying to land an attack onto this Landorus as well. Don't forget, this Blastoise can't be switching out, even if it goes through all of the turns um, to try and get there. It's just going to have its special attack dropped for the rest of the game. So, uh, Renzo in a really good position. This Landorus uh, could just be causing problems uh, as well. If, if it wants to get more special defense boost down, it can do that. Uh, and a nice switch in from Incineroar here, I think, just to make sure that the Amoongus can keep something safe later with that Rage Powder you were talking about. And of course, every time it swaps out and swaps back in, getting to gain some more HP, which is huge. But Leonard, just going to go and protect that Reggie Alecki this time around trying to survive this max quake but it's unable to this landorus i mean it never got dropped at any point its attack still intact means it can just deal all of this damage to the protect and is just bringing it down to a 1v4 and this blastoise as cool as it looks i don't know if it could do it against these pokemon now let's see how much the cannonade does don't forget two special defense boosts over on that landorus from the max quakes <laughs> and it's just not enough Look at how impactful that is. Yes, there's going to be the residual damage between turns. That's certainly going to help out. A little bit of hail damage as well. But this Landorus has put an absolute shift in being able to take knockouts, even through protects as well. I mean, the Regilecki not bulky at all. Tried to keep itself safe, but Renzo knew that he could get the knockout because he'd already got damage down on it. Uh, Blastoise does have one more turn of its max. Uh, you know, maybe trying to find an advantage there, but... You know, it's got to knock out all of Renzo's Pokemon. Um, and, you know, Renzo's just that confident with it. He just wants a little extra damage down already. I mean, 
if you're going to be KOing your own Incineroar, you might as well just get that tiny little, little bit of chip damage and it's taking down its partner in Incineroar and does get the damage done, but it is going to be going down to that Hailstorm, so it is going to be a 2v1 here with that Regieleki and the Amoongus, but I mean, Sasuke definitely doesn't appreciate staring down a Regieleki, regardless no, of the Wakan Berry. <laughs> Yeah, the Wakan Berry may be able to potentially help out a little bit, but I think this Regilek is guaranteed at least a couple of hits too. The Amoongus coming in alongside it, after that Regenerator looking very, very healthy, we'll be able to Rage Powder at least one of the Ice Beams away, or, or even, you know, uh, I think it has to be Ice Beam at this point, you can't have your Blastoise not attacking, and I just don't think the Wakan Berry is going to be enough, so the Amoongus uh, should be just dragging that away, making sure this Regieleki is, is free to attack twice if it needs to, but I'm not even sure if it's going to need to. Of course, we're going to see just how much this Thunderbolt is going to be doing through the Pokemon Berry. I mean, Regieleki hits like a truck, and it's going to do that here as well. Weakened damage, not weakened enough. It's going to be picking up that KO, and Renzo is going to take this in a 2-0 to be advancing forward. A fantastic game 